We just got a call in. There's been an explosion at the Xfinity Center. We're expecting approximately 25 patients to Hartford Hospital. That's all we know right now. We don't know how far away any of them were from the West or what their injuries are. Get yourself set. I'll send in the first patient in five minutes. So, welcome to Disaster Day. You will be allowed to use three rooms, uh, Resusi, ICU, and the ED. Um, those rooms may or may not already have patients in them. Uh, and, and if there's a mannequin in the room that is a patient that's already there in the ED that's not from the MCI, you have to deal with them as well, okay? Uh, in each room is a room coordinator. They're marked off with the same armband that I'm wearing that is now being covered by my neck. Um, their word is law. If they tell you that, you that they want you to verbalize something instead, then you verbalize it. If they tell you that something is done, even though it didn't look like it was done, it was done. Okay? Um, and they will sort of be your point person for anything that goes on in that room, as well as any of us who aren't running around and handling them. They, they were going to handle it with the last group. So. Um, in case you couldn't tell, we're going to get a lot of patients today. Um, and they'll have varying levels of injury. Since we don't have uh, a monitor for every single person, they're going to have index cards with vital signs on them, which they will show you. Please do not take them because those cards need to be flipped at certain times for certain patients. Uh, you, your job is to read those vitals and decide what to do based off of that. <coughs> Some of these patients will need procedures. If you deem a patient needs a procedure, there, is, there are task trainers in the room that you will do the procedure on, at which point the patient will then flip their card if that's what needs to happen. <coughs> The, the back of the card may have some new vital signs or some sort of change on it that you need to then address, okay? Some cards flip up multiple times, so please be aware and, and you know, use those cards as sort of, if, if they haven't flipped it, then the vitals stay the same, okay? If you want any imaging, like an x-ray or a CT, or if you want like an EKG or anything, ask them for it. If, that, if it's supposed to be gotten on them, they will have it in their pocket to give to you. Once they're going to ED, okay. is that right? So where two is going? To take care of those. We're going to okay. the um, recess bay. And three is ICU. ICU. And then a couple ones are going to stay with me to take care of So me. one's on the green, Rochelle. but you're going to take Rochelle, them. you're going to have to drop people yeah, out of, some of them you're going to have to drop people we'll out of the ED. ICU yeah. early on. Yeah. Oh, you know, because we're going to so do nothing in the ICU right now. Two, recess, three, ICU. Three. One, two, three, one, two, three. Two, three, one, two, three, one, two, oh, three. So this patient was already here. Uh, <laughs> they are being seen for urosepsis. Okay, so who wants to, someone should be ready yes. to take care of this patient. I'm going to go with that. So let's take care of this one. Right, you have a lot of people, so for now, let's have a couple of people on that. Someone's probably going to need a central line. Yeah. Yeah. Run your sepsis out. Help! 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 Hi, this is Help! Help! Hi, hello, can you take a deep breath? I'm like breathing! Okay. Help me! Can you turn to the right, please? Okay, we're gonna take you right down the hall here. Follow us. So you guys have some left chest pain on you. Bruising, normal vital signs. I don't know. Okay. We're using pain right now. Is she coming from triage or she's coming from another? Yeah. From triage. You got a BP of 60 over 40. Whatever you do. SPO2 of 85%. Okay, we're going to probably to the OR. ORs are closed right now? Okay. All right, you guys, we got a BP 60 over 40, 85% over there. This guy, I think, Okay, let's get, okay, we need, so we'll need bilateral chest tubes on him Im immediately when he gets here. And it's probably a, um, an airway. Who's doing airway for me? I got it. Okay. ORs are currently closed right Testa, can you, you, you do a primary survey on him, please? Sure. Let's get some fentanyl rock and talk to run up, please. Can you talk at all? Okay, can't talk. Looks like he's breathing. Okay, okay. airways patent. So we'll Let's get around. Yeah. Twenty of a time and eight. Oh, you we have friends on the left. All right. All right. Okay. Okay. So let's put the guy in the bed. Okay. Okay. Let's let's check. 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 Okay, so let's put him in a bed. Let's get a primary survey on him. All right, we have nasal cannula, and do we have like a non breather on him right now? I assume. Radio core here, charge the airway this guy. Okay. Okay. I can't have any. 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 I can't so if you can help Vicky get him in a bed, and um, and you'll take over yeah, airway for him, okay? Yeah. Is the chest tube in? I got a finger thoracostomy. Do we have a rush of air here? Yeah. Okay. 
Can we get a repeat set of vital signs on this guy? Test, like get a repeat set of vitals yeah. and start again your primary, right. secondary, tertiary survey. Rock, you tell me to switch on this can gentleman. He's excavated. Yeah. How do we get a Okay, repeat vitals, BP 125 over 80, 185. Okay. Somebody shut up. No! I'm just dying here. Shut up! Here you go. Get I gotta sit down. I gotta sit down. I'm too much here. Do you want to bring an upgrade? Oh! Where? 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 Oh wait, no, no, yeah. Oh, wait, can we get the guy with the gun right there? Yeah, so we close the door. We're not going out. Okay, so we go with the gun. Can we call out to our, uh, to the other team? Um, other team. Please lock coming and close the door. Alright, let's call the next room. Over. Oh. <laughs> Shut up! Before I kill you. Oh, you let everybody in here, so you my work done. Don't look at me! Don't look at me! Help! Help! Don't really hurt him. Someone tell me what's going on. I'm shot! Leave me alone! Can we get our security right. Security? No. Alright, I need one of the Demetrius position and decide not on the ground. Okay, man. This gentleman is the shooter for the air ambulance. I need help! Hand behind your back, hand behind your back. Secure, 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 secure. No, no, they didn't want to Go back, go back, go back, go back, go back. Yep. Alright, just for your shot. Just for your shot. Any place else? What are your vitals? They're normal, so. Put a pressure test on there. I think we're going to have to. Yeah. Where's my visitor? Where's my visitor? This is going to be a tough turn to get out on. She's supposed to be coming in. Pop a pressure there. Do you have any more else in the chat? No. No and, uh, this patient can go up to okay. four. We have a chest. We have a. Okay. Any other chest? We have 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 any any other chest? We have any other chest? We have any any other chest? We have any other chest? We have any other chest? We have any other chest? We you heard a lot of bang, and the next thing you know, you're. How many patients in this room? I feel a lot of We have uh, I feel a lot five right now. Five. We have five, Joel. Five. Any stable to go to floor? That one, this one may be uh, stable to go to floor for uh, medic carpal. So this one is dead. Uh, What's your situation? Shot has been lifted. We are clear. Right. So it has to move to red. Who can't? So she's been shot in the arm. This guy, okay. last, we have another gunshot over here. <laughs> arm, you got a pressure okay. test on it. Yes, you do. Do an ultrasound first. So, you have a positive medication. Okay. Uh, What'd you think? Uh, it, was, uh, it was challenging. It was good. It was a good, uh, really good drill. We put in a lot of chest tubes. <laughs> So what what did you guys think? It's crazy. It's awesome. It's awesome. It's crazy. It's so much fun. Yeah. Yeah. I wanted to be <laughs> yeah. I wanted to make this more. Yeah. It was yeah, sick. Do you wish that this was all of your training, but I think to 
actually get to a point where you're a little bit outside your comfort zone, which is why we push and then push and then push. Because at first it just looks like a busy day in flu green mm -hmm. with a few reds thrown in, and then all of a sudden, oh, yeah. it's yeah. so yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What we're going to do is we're going to do a two-part debrief. I'm going to have the law enforcement officers come back in, both Public Safety and Hartford Police, and I want to talk with them a little bit. Um, and just so you guys know, the officers that responded did not know what the case was. They were as much in the dark as you guys were. Um, and I want to have them chat about what they noticed and some behaviors that they thought were a little unsafe, potentially. And then they're going to go for 10 minutes, and then Stan and I are going to do the medical debrief after that, OK? So I thought you guys did well. I mean, very chaotic. And, you know, it's kind of different to see the blue suit come through, and then you hear gunfire go off. Probably some of you noticed that you didn't even hear so many gunshots. It just sounded like small pops. That's not something that's about to be This is where we, we need to mentally prepare for a scenario of how are you going to respond. And this is a great opportunity for what we call stress inoculation. To put yourselves into a stressful situation in a training environment where it can be controlled. So if God forbid you are ever put into a situation like this, your stress level, you'll be able to manage it a lot better than if you were going into a hole. Okay, so now you've already got the wheels turning and thinking about, hey, what if, what if, what if, what if. Awesome. Uh, big thanks to everyone who put it together, um, especially Dave Ruby, uh, along with all of the actors who were, who were great in their parts. So thank you. This was fantastic. What was so awesome about it? Um, the realism of it, the, the actual pace of it, what it made you think about, and um, really kind of compartmentalize when or if it actually happens, God forbid. Um, great learning opportunity for us. That is very realistic. The makeup artists were awesome, and the patients and the actors were awesome, and it was very believable. Um, it was really fun. Um, it was really fun seeing you know all of our other residents kind of working on the spot really to, trying to like you know organize you know and to triage all these different patients trying to organize ourselves and divide up and you know divide ourselves up so it was cool in a sense to see how we all kind of work together and treat the same patients which was different from our normal ER experience. It was a lot of fun. It was really good. Um, residency is supposed to push you, and this was something that definitely pushed us out of our comfort zone. And that's good. We'll be better for when this actually happens. So it was awesome. Thank you, guys. Thank you for everything. I, I thought it was really an amazing experience. I think the moulage was really, really well done. I, I didn't know what to expect, but it was, uh, it was a really fun session. Uh, we just had a mass casualty uh, drill um, in the Sim Center. You know, it's a great opportunity. You know, they have a massive Sim Center here. And and, you know, it allows us to do many different things, and this is the first time I've had opportunity to do, uh, you know, a mass casualty uh, simulation. It was very realistic, um, and uh, it was great. Uh, I thought it was uh, challenging taking care of multiple patients at the same time and being a team leader. It's something that I'm not yet used to. Even as a senior resident, we don't get an exposure to caring for many, many people at one time and trying to make sure everyone gets good care and at the same time trying to ensure the uh, safety of the staff. So it was challenging, but I think it was a great experience. You want me to look? This isn't just look, just look a lass. Or I, I felt like the, I, are, you, are you recording? Yes. I felt, like, I felt like the wounds were so realistic that I found myself like checking for pulses because I thought that the wounds were actually real. Did, <laughs> did you, what did you think about the session in general? Oh, I thought it was amazing. It was, it was a lot of fun. It was, it was a totally new and unique experience. And I think, you know, in this day and age, it's, it's not unheard of for someone to show up in the hospital with a gun. So what I wanted to do was do a double, uh, double sort of attack on this. I wanted to have the residents be prepared to deal with a mass casualty incident, which is certainly not unheard of. But we also wanted them to know what to do when there's an active shooter in the building. And we've had that ALICE training. And that's all well and good, but being able to apply it is a whole different story, especially in a stressful scenario. So what we wanted to do was really stress them out with what sounds like a real gun and see what they would do. And I think we got some fantastic reactions from them today. And I really think that we were able to teach them some good and bad behaviors in that regard, as well as discuss proper ways to allocate resources in a mass casualty incident. And I think that really furthered their learning in that regard.